Hello everyone, back to you into today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's video. That's going to take us to around the 16th of January, uh, something like that, so into the middle part of the month. And we'll be able to extend out, beyond that, the extended GFS and ECM ensembles um, right around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 for the next four weeks as well at the end of the video. But starting us off is the uh, stratosphere. So I thought we'd just have a quick look at what's going on uh, there. So this is from the JMA. This is looking at the temperature at 10 HPA in the stratosphere currently versus uh, like the uh, long-term average. So the grey line is a long-term average. At this point of the year, we should normally be starting to lift up the temperature in the stratosphere. You see how this grey line sort of starts curving upwards. So we would normally be past the coldest point of the year, which happens around um, early December, uh, somewhere uh, around there, early to mid-December. And we would now typically be starting to lift the temperature up a little bit at a 10 HPA, which is a trend that continues right way through then until um, the summer, June and July and August, just there where we reach our maximum temperatures in the stratosphere over North Pole. Well, the grey line shows where we are right now. So, of course, back in December, we had a very cold stratospheric temperature indeed, went to, to just under minus 80. Uh, where we are right now is just there. So we are, in fact, lifting the temperature up a little bit at um, uh, 10 HPA. So uh, we're still a little bit below average, a little bit colder than average. But overall, temperatures are lifting up a bit or have lifted up a bit from where they were back in um back in December. So we're back near to uh, trained, really, in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA, although still, of course, very cold. We're talking about temperatures uh, of around minus 65, something like that, on average in the early part of um, uh, of January. So still very cold, but we are lifting the temperature up a little bit now at 10 HPA. If we go a bit lower down to 30 HPA, uh, so still very cold at that level. This is like the tropospheric level uh, as well. Very, very cold still at uh, 30 HPA. Still around minus 80. Went around minus 85 in the middle of December. So it has lifted up slightly from that. But it's still well below average with the temperature at 30 HPA. And that's closer to the troposphere, of course. So that will be driving... Partly, anyway, driving uh, zonality, um, powering up the polar vortex and uh, really driving uh, the westerlies across the Atlantic and into Europe. So at 30 HPA, closer to the troposphere, very cold still with the temperature. It has turned a corner and lifted up slightly at 10 HPA. Uh, this is the latest forecast from the GFS for the next couple of weeks at MetroSeal.fr for the temperature at 10 HPA. So we have had a warming of the stratosphere over Siberia, not reaching the required level of a sudden stratospheric warming. That's like a moderate uh, warming of the stratosphere that's taking place over Siberia. Still cold with these blue and purple colours over the uh, North Pole and the Arctic itself. Moving through, we see that this warming over Siberia sort of heads towards Canada, but never really penetrates traits into the Arctic. It's having a go at getting itself in towards Greenland, but not really uh, getting into Greenland all that well. Uh, and then starts sort of fizzling out somewhere over Canada, seemingly. All the time, these blue and purple colours remain rooted over the Arctic, and particularly on our side of the Arctic, so like Greenland, Scandinavia, um, and then back into the North Pole. On our side, uh, we keep those blue and purple colours going, so the cold temperatures remain for the next uh, week, definitely over the Arctic and the pole itself. What's I've gone forward? Let's go to there. And uh, that's how things look on the 14th of January. So still those blue and purple colours, almost purple anyway, over the Arctic. The warming that started off over Siberia is now like uh, over Greenland or to the very far southwest of Greenland. And it's sort of fizzling out a little bit there. Uh, as well. Uh, as we go to another slight warming mare over Siberia around the 18th of January, nothing really comes of that. And so up to the 22nd of January, two weeks out, we keep those blue and purple colours going. Still no sign yet of any particularly uh, impressive warming of the stratosphere. Certainly no sign of a sudden stratospheric warming there in the next couple of weeks. Uh, now, this is from the ECMWF uh, via the University of Berlin. This is what's going on at 1 HPA. So at 1 HPA, which is like the very, very top of the stratosphere, as far as you can go, still we 
be within the stratospheric level is 1 HPA. And there, a very substantial warming has taken place over the uh, North Pole. We've got these red colours here over the pole itself. On the ECM charts, the pole is actually highlighted helpfully with this black X uh, just here. On the temperature scale, that's gone into a red colour, so it's like plus 20 uh, Celsius, can you believe, uh, at 1 HPA. So a very, very significant warming of the stratosphere has taken place at the very highest uh, level at 1 HPA. This will have no impact on the, on the weather, though, because it's too far up to have any effect on the troposphere. What can sometimes happen, though, when you get a really significant warming of the stratosphere at 1 H HPA, is that sometimes a week or two later on, you will begin to get quite a significant warming at like 10 HPA and then 30 HPA, like closer towards the troposphere. So um, this is something that can, uh, sometimes, not all, all the time, but sometimes this can be a precursor to a sun stratospheric warming in the 10 to 30 HPA level of the stratosphere, uh, where we can then start to think about impacts on the troposphere, the boundary level of the atmosphere, weather is taking place. But at the moment, this will have no impact directly on the weather. It's too far up in the top of the stratosphere. And up to two weeks out, there's no sign with the ECM either of... Um, uh, of a particularly significant warming of stratosphere over the pole. This is how things are uh, currently, or were yesterday. So, uh, again, picking up on that uh, warming of the stratosphere over Siberia, it's quite a significant warming, but it's not reaching sudden stratospheric warming temperature levels. Cold still with those blue colours over the uh, North Pole itself. And in two weeks' time, this is how things look at 10 HPA, so still cold then. Uh, you see that, uh, that moderate warming of stratosphere that's currently happening over Siberia has moved over towards um, like the Canadian side of uh, Greenland, um, where it's kind of fizzling out really. But over the pole itself, it remains cold with those uh, blue colours. So up to 10 days out, there's no sign of a sudden stratospheric warming impacting either the North Pole or more widely in the Arctic and probably not two weeks away either. We shall see further on whether this very significant warming that's taking place at 1 HPA, whether that does have any, um, uh, you know, any follow-on uh, 10 or 30 HPA in, in a couple of weeks. But for the moment, certainly no sign of any sudden stratospheric warmings at the 10 or 30 HPA boundary level, which means that we're likely to see the continuation of the weather pattern that we've been in through most of the winter, which is going to be westerly for the time being and uh, Atlantic-driven. And we see this on the uh, 500 millibar height zombie flow charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we We'll have a look in a moment is on the bottom whoops just better get the phone again right phone answered sorry about that i really will have to remember to unplug the phone uh when i'm doing these videos always got someone ringing in seemingly uh right so we're with the 500 bit of our height anomaly flow charts from Penn State University for the 7 to 10 day time frame. And uh, we've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. Talk about it in a moment. So we can see that with the ECM, yes, we're Atlantic driven in the 7 to 10 day time frame. There's deep low pressure out of the Atlantic again. Strong jet stream bringing westerly and southwesterly. high pressure over southern and southeastern parts of Europe. It all, it's all telling us that um, it's going to be Atlantic driven and mild up to the 7 to 10 day time frame. There may be some cooler days mixed and it won't be continuously exceptionally mild. But overall, yes, we are in for an Atlantic driven given spell up to and probably even a little bit beyond the middle of January. Cold trough sinking through western parts of the states. That's where winter will be starting to bite or will be biting in the next uh, week to 10 days and a warm ridge over on the eastern side of the states. Remember, of course, we've got this ridge of high pressure uh, in the northern Pacific Ocean that's associated with those warm sea surface temperature anomalies that are up in that part of the Pacific Ocean. So very much a trough ridge type pattern. And we, along with eastern parts of America, happen to be on the warm side of the ridges. 
as the ECM. It's have a GFS is rocking, and it's very, very similar uh, as well. So again, we've got this ridge covering southern and southeastern and eastern parts of Europe, and deep low pressure in the North Atlantic coming into the north of Europe with a strong westerly Atlantic-driven jet stream as well. That warm ridge is over, mild ridge, is over on the eastern side of America with the cold trough digging in to the western side of the states just bare. Winter will be biting in the western and northwestern part of the states and then another mild ridge sitting in the northern part of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, just there. So again, very trough ridge pattern. We are driving west as We're driving in Atlantic conditions with low pressure wing bouts of rain and a strong uh, jet stream as well could produce some gale force winds at times. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to these on at Belfast, only Northern Ireland today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Belfast and we're starting off close to average at the moment we're going to go very mild tomorrow exceptionally mild air coming up from uh, Bermuda or the Bahamas perhaps tomorrow uh will be very windy though going to be severe gales around tomorrow so we won't necessarily feel all that mild uh to be honest and there will be rain even off as well Midweek temperature drops a little bit, uh, and then it picks up again later in the week, where it drops again towards the weekend. So very much up and down with the temperature, as you'd expect, in uh, uh, in a zonal pattern. We call that a zonal sine wave, where we have the warmer and the cooler and the warmer and the cooler uh, sectors alternating with one another. Later on, uh, as going to the middle part of January and on in the second half of the month, overall generally on the milder than average side and unsettled too. Bear in mind, this is for Belfast, so it's very close to the Atlantic. Going to be one of the wetter places in the country, but nevertheless, we do see regular precipitation spikes coming through from beginning to end, so there will be further bouts of rain. A few days ago, it looked like we might get a dry January, but um, I think certainly the next week, 10 days, we're going to see plenty more rain coming. I wouldn't necessarily say we're seeing a return of the deluge, although that does look a little bit deluge-esque for Northern Ireland, but that's probably not representative for most parts of the UK, really. That's going to be a wetter place compared to many parts of the country uh, in this kind of Atlantic-driven pattern. But nevertheless, it's going to be unsettled, even if we don't uh, quite go to deluge-type uh, levels. Temperature anomalies from the 6th to 14th of January, a little bit milder than average. I'm surprised not a little bit higher than that, but there will be a couple of cooler days in there, as we see here. There are a couple of cooler days coming up. So uh, overall still averaging out a little bit mild than average, exceptionally mild across the northern parts of Europe, of course, continuation of the uh, winter so far. And then the 6th to the 14th of January, January with the precipitation anomaly, more or less on the wet of an average side through most parts of the country. You don't have to go very far away to find the dry conditions through France, Spain and Portugal though. And obviously that's where the Azores High is ridging in. Right, so this is the latest uh, GFS run. This is for Thursday. Low pressure bringing lots of heavy rain across the country on Thursday. That low pressure gets out of the way into Friday. It's a bit cooler for Friday. Might even get a frost, can you believe, on Friday night. Who would have thought that in the middle of winter? Uh, but we go through Saturday. We're back into those mild west south westerlies again. And Saturday looks like a very mild day. Rain up in the north in particular. Sunday, a little bit cooler. Back into sunshine and showers. And so it goes on into next week. Deep area of low pressure somewhere close to the country early next week. Uh, GFS is highlighting this quite a lot. This is the 14th of January. Could be rather stormy then. Sometime around the, around the middle of the month, 14th or 15th of January, watch out for some severe gales. And it just carries on, moving up towards day 10. Low pressure continues to driving off the Atlantic, so further bouts of rain. Winds are swinging to the southwest there on day 10, 16th. That's pushing up another very mild pu uh, push of air from the Azores. Into more extended range, so it goes on. High pressure uh, down across much of uh, central, southern, and southwestern Europe, uh, and low pressure out towards Greenland and Iceland. It's about as zonal as it gets that. It doesn't get any more zonal than that. And then we get through to the end of GFS run. The ridge just starts to move a little bit, starts to position itself, um, position itself just to the southwest of Ireland. So about slightly cooler northwestly is by Ben, but I mean, this is over two weeks away. It's 22nd of of uh, January. 
Uh, GM, so unsettled on Thursday. Heavy rain, particularly associated across England and Wales, I think, for Thursday. Then it goes a bit drier and cooler Friday into Saturday. Back into wet and windy weather, though, um, by the end of Friday. So this doesn't even give us that frost, except perhaps in fast now, Pete. This doesn't even allow that frost on Friday night uh, with the GM. Uh, and then we're all into Atlantic Gym and stuff through the course of next week as well. Could be a bit stormy sometime around Monday, Tuesday. Look at these long fetch southwesty winds. How far south the air is originating from down here. About, as, uh, about off the chart, really. And pumping northwards. So that's very mild stuff being pumped northwards on those southerly southwesty winds through the middle of next week. Up to day 10, that's how we're looking still mild and Atlantic driven. And um, then the ECMWF is uh, looking like that. So really quite wet for England and Wales, potentially on Thursday. Uh, into Friday, turns a little bit drier and cooler. There's those southwesties coming back in. So again, we might not even get that frost. Uh, on Friday night. It's all about the timings of that next low coming in for the weekend. Uh, Sunday, so uh, that one looks mild to start off with, but it turns a bit cooler and showery. And into next week, could be a bit stormy, sometime around Monday to Tuesday. Severe gales, particularly for northern and western parts of the country, perhaps, and wet and windy too. The Atlantic uh, onslaught continues up to day 10, which is Thursday, the 16th of January. This is the option that's on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for Day 10 uh, from the Icelandic Met Office, which gets us to the 16th of January. So high pressure is sitting to our east, uh, but low pressure is in control up to Day 10 out to the west. So still quite unsettled and mild uh, with southwesterly winds up to Day 10. So I'll just run you through day by day till we get to the end of a GFS running. You'll notice that over time, high pressure builds in from the east. So the ECM does settle us down as we go through the third week of January with those red colours building in uh, from the east. That's how we look as far as we can get to in two weeks' time, which is uh, 21st of January. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM, so all of them have low pressure pushed back up towards Greenland and Iceland by then. High pressure building in. Uh, from the east. Uh, now, again, the exact origins of the air, very critical with this. It could be very mild and spring-like if the air is being dragged up from the southwest, so still coming up from the Azores, uh, with sort of a south-southwesterly feed. If the feed of wind and air is south-southeasterly, then it could be a bit colder. We might start to think about an inversion, maybe getting some frost and fog going, uh, more particularly for the east and the southeast of the country rather than the northwest. I think western Scotland and Northern Ireland will still be very mild even up to this point. But down in the southeast, it's possible that could be a little bit colder, but it does depend exact on the exact origins of the air with that. But drying out and settling down as we go through the third week of uh, January is the trend with the ECM ensembles today. Uh, finally, uh, CFS V2, these are 500 millibar heights breaking down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 6th to the 12th of January. The coming week has uh, a strong ridge from the Azores into much of Western and Southwestern Europe and Southern Europe too. Low pressures out to the Northwest. So we're drawing up those Southwest winds. It's going to be mild or very mild. Unsettled particularly so for Northern parts of the country. Week two is the 13th to the 19th of January, and then the high pressure begins to build from the east. The low pressure gets pushed out into the middle of the Atlantic, so this is settling things down. Uh, again, exact origins of the air are critical. We're still on the mild side of the jet stream. If we're drawing in a southeasterly, it could turn a bit colder with frost. If we're drawing in a south-southwesterly, then it could actually be quite spring-like for the uh, middle part of January. Week four, this looks more definitively colder to me. Week four, uh, week three, I should say, is the 20th to the 26th of January with the high pressure then over southern Scandinavia. That would be bringing in continental air. So that would be turning things cold, not snow. There's no suggestion I wouldn't have thought there of snow from the north or from the east. But certainly the wind direction and the origins of the air would be continental. So that would be, it would be very dry, of course, but uh, there could be frost with that. 
I think. Although, although Mod will probably say Miles still, but um, I think that could well be producing Frost by that point. And then we go through to week four, which is the 27th of January to the 2nd of February. The high pressure then is centred somewhere over Denmark. Low pressure still out to west. Again, it all depends on the exact origins of the air. If the wind is coming up from that direction of the air, then it's going to be mild. If the wind is coming in from that direction, which I think probably still would be, then uh, it might be rather on the colder side from frost anyway. Again, it's very anti-cyclonic, so there wouldn't be all that much snow around. To get proper snowy east, is a high pressure has to be further north up here. We have to have low pressure coming in around here. And then that gradient will strengthen the easterly wind and will start to draw the air in from uh, northern uh, Russia and Siberia. So it's not a it's not a snowy scenario, but I think week three and four uh, does imply something a little bit colder from frost, perhaps under that ridge of high pressure. Temperature anomalies in week one from the 6th to the 12th of January. It's very substantially mild of an average week coming up. And then we go through to week two, which is also very significantly milder than average. That's the 13th to the 19th of January. Uh, week three, still looking milder than average. Less so weeks one and two, but still above average. A bit dubious about that. I do think there will be more cold uh, potential from frost anyway in uh, that week and then week four which is 27th of january to 2nd of february that one is also uh it's also milder than average but again a little bit less so gradually over time the anomaly is reducing but still above average i think it would be colder from frost at that point notice extremely cold through much of canada and north america by the end of january and into the start of february winter really really biting on the other side of the Atlantic by that point. Precipitation, the coming week is unsettled. Above average rainfall through most parts of the country. Uh, week two, actually going a little bit drier, especially to ourselves and uh, east as well. Week three, drier and average for all parts of the country. That's as high pressure centred over the top of the country. So obviously you expect to be pretty dry there. And then finally, week four, looks a bit more unsettled actually, especially so to the north and to the west of the country. Uh, so it's as it has been throughout this winter, it looks like the next couple of weeks are going to be at Atlantic, certainly the next week, 10 days, going to be Atlantic driven, mild, wet, windy. We may start to move towards a spell of higher pressure around the middle part of the month and into the second half of January. And as we've been saying in videos time and again over the past few days, where the high goes, where the ridge is going, that will be the critical factor as to the feel of the weather as we get through into the third week of the month. If the high is drawing up south south westlies, it will continue to be very mild. If the, dry, if the high is drawing in south south easterlies, then we can start to think about frost at the very least uh, and certainly no sign of anything particularly snowy coming up in the next few weeks uh, right so uh, we'll be back tomorrow of course with another week 10 day video update and um, we're going to have as well tomorrow the start of the ECM draft 38 okay that's been rested over Christmas and New Year but it will be back tomorrow first ECM 30 day look ahead um, for the UK and Europe to first video up tomorrow that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.